and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. Today we are in Phoenix, Arizona, reviving the 73 Bronco that's been off the road since 2001. For the last three days we've been traveling across the country from Iowa here to Phoenix, Arizona. We've been through blizzards, rocks, mountains, boring landscapes, some pretty landscapes, and finally we have arrived here in Phoenix, specifically Chandler, Arizona. Like I mentioned, this Bronco has been off the road since 2001, but it has been sitting right here in this storage facility for the last 10 years. Our goal for this week is to get this Bronco running and driving again and take it back on and off-roading. Hopefully in just a couple days we can have a running and driving rig and go hit some trails out here in the deserts near Phoenix, Arizona. What do you say, Mook? I say let's get started. Let's get going. Let's have another badass survival series here on the original YouTube Revival Channel. Before we get started, I should probably tell the backstory of this truck and how it led us all the way out to Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> you okay? <laughs> the heat like made this expand and pop and it scared me. <laughs> A couple months ago, about the time of the 79 Bronco Revival, I got an email from a man named Sean who said, hey, my dad passed away and left us this 73 Bronco that's been sitting outside at a storage lot for the last 10 years. Would you like to come get it running? Because I want to see it go to a good home. Long story short, Mook and I have traveled all the way to Phoenix, Arizona to purchase said Bronco and put it back on the road where it belongs. There's no doubt in my mind that this thing has been sitting right here for 10 years. Looking at it, it seems to be very solid. All the metal is still here, even up under this plastic trim. The rockers are totally intact. I don't feel any mud anywhere. This thing seems to be an absolute survivor desert vehicle. Look at this tire, though. Yeah, that one, <laughs> that one needs some help. We do have a bit of damage on this fender, to say the least. He's, uh, he's seen better days, but other than that, this thing is in really decent shape. It's got the good Arizona interior aka none it's all been rotted out it's full of stuff um oh wow look at that seat that thing is quality fuzzy oh it has a roll bar i didn't even notice supposedly this truck ran and drove when it was parked um i think it was hit here and because of this accident they stopped driving it we have a title we do not have any keys we've got about eh, five days to enjoy the nice arizona sun get out of the aisle cold for a little bit and put this thing back on the road. What do you say we pop the hood and take a look inside? Let's do it. You know what, I've always wanted one of these trucks. And I've just never been able to afford one because they're so expensive, until now. Come on here. <laughs> oh boy, that's not a good sign. I don't even know what's in this. I don't know if it's a 302 or an six or anything. I bought this sucker completely sight unseen. What could go wrong, you know? There's so much stuff falling out of this. There we go. I can only imagine what's inside here. Holy shit. Oh my lord. Look at this like massive hunks of poop. Among eight million other things. Is there a hood? Yes, there is a hood prop. Okay, so it looks like we have a 302 V8. I believe this to be an automatic transmission truck due to the pedals inside. Uh, it's got manual brakes, power steering, and it was a non-AC truck, which I don't know if they even came with AC. I don't know a lot about these Broncos. I've never owned one. I've never worked on one. I've always wanted to own one, but I've considered them to be unattainable unless I found one that was in a non-running condition somewhere down south where the metal was still good at a fair price. And that's exactly what we have here, miraculously. So, I get to have a Bronco. Hell yeah. We have a non-clutch fan, so let's see if our motor turns. It does. Wow, okay, it turns really, really easy. <laughs> Almost too easy. Hopefully it's still good. Well, Mook, I think I know our first step. Get a shovel <laughs> and dig this engine out. It's still got the Bronco air cleaner, which are apparently hard to find. Is that a business card up there? Probably. It is. Professional painting ink. Oh! 
Interested in selling, question mark. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Matthew. This one's mine. This has to be the dirtiest engine bay I've ever seen. All right, let's get an extension cord or a generator or something to power the vacuum we brought. So we brought the vacuum, <laughs> but no way to power it. Okay, to start things off, we're gonna clean this out a bit because we want somewhere to put our tools so we don't have to keep unloading them and reloading them at the motel. Since this is a more secure location and we can leave them here. There is a lot of stuff in here. Oh yeah. perfectly good cooler. There's a softball and a mitt. Throw that over here. Oh, good time to point this out. Here you go. Here's your last registration sticker for 2001. What else we got in here? Oh my lord. A ball sack. A bed frame. Is there a bed frame? Yeah. Oh yeah, there is. Man, there's just all sorts. There's a TV dish. <laughs> What the heck? Oh, like a dream. Oh, look how nice it is. Oh man, look at these patterns. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow, we're definitely in Arizona. That's awesome. So we have a weird scheduling issue with today being a Saturday, the first day we're working on it. The tire shops and stuff are only open today, not tomorrow, the day we hope to drive it. We don't have any power, like I mentioned, so we're going to pick up a generator off Facebook Marketplace. They're not done till after work, so everything's just colliding. We're just going to make the best of it and clean the truck out as much as we can. Kevin, yeah. have you seen the mud flaps? Oh my god, it's Prospector <laughs> Pete. Back off. Those are amazing. The purchase was absolutely worth it now. It's a matching set. This looks like a packet of x-rays. Oh my gosh. They look like negatives. I think they are, yeah. These uh these will go back to the family then. It's always interesting to see what you find in these cars, especially if when they were uh parked because someone passed away. And the family hasn't abandoned them in 15 years. They probably don't even know these exist. So that'll be neat to tell him about. A huge box of legal bills. Little Caesars. Legal documents? Yeah. These probably need to be shredded or filed. So uh, stay. Put these over here. Ooh, I think I know what that stain on the ground is now. I'm going to venture to say this truck has a uh, transmission leak. Oh my gosh, there's a monkey and a dinosaur! The dinosaur's mine! You want the monkey He's too? He's missing a foot, but I still love him. Do you, still, do you want the monkey as well? No, we'll give these back to Sean. <laughs> he gets the monkey. <laughs> we can fight over the dinosaur. I think one of these might be Kevin, the uh, previous owner. So these will go back to the family. There's another one. Oh, cool. Nice. Carb cleaner. <laughs> More clues as to the uh, vehicle's engine condition. Okay, what else we got? A visor. A visor. That might be to this truck. Oh. Motor oil, 1040. Can we get the roof liner out, actually? <laughs> We're gonna hang on to this, but just set it to the side. Don't worry, this episode's not gonna be just digging out a Bronco. Once, once we get the tools necessary, we'll dig out the engine bay and then fire it up. There's more room in here than I thought big prize. Oh yes. Golf clubs. The old five iron. There's not even a name on these. <laughs> Into the sports pile. This looks like a piece of the headliner kind of thing if it goes to this truck. 
Looks like it goes on a boat. <laughs> I think it goes just like that. And then the visors go in here. It covers I, up the motor. Maybe. For the yeah. windshield wipers. I don't know. That. You guys tell me. Does this go to a Bronco? <laughs> I've never owned one. Oh, yep. It does. Right there. It says Ford. Look, we got a bed frame and a tarp. We could have just camped out here instead of getting a motel. Yeah, that's a tire. It doesn't look to be in any better shape than the bad one that's on it already. So we'll just go get those new tires. I love how fuzzy this interior is. <laughs> I know, right? So it looks like we have the uh, the rear seat, thankfully. That has a lot of shag carpet. Look at it, more patterns. <laughs> this truck has gotten exponentially bigger now that we've cleaned it out. Did you say there weren't keys for this? Yeah, I haven't seen anything. Have you? There's something. Oh. There's these hanging on the column. Is it just a single key? Yeah. Does it say Ford or oh, anything? Oh, it says fuel. Fuel? Oh, that's probably this guy, though. It's probably so corroded. Yeah. <laughs> well, we might have the fuel key. That's good. Something. I would say look up above the visor, but uh, that's over there. Look! <laughs> <laughs> Is that door open? Not yet. <laughs> Ooh, clever girl. <laughs> Is it stuck? It's really stuck. Come on! <laughs> Let me in! Whoop its ass, Mook. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your secret! <laughs> you can do it. I can do it. I believe in you. They won't tell me it's secrets. <laughs> Let me give her a go. Can I borrow your muscles? Yeah. <laughs> okay, but do my trick though. Okay. <laughs> I needed more height and more muscle. <laughs> yeah. It's way down there. <laughs> She's open though. Let's see if we can rinse and repeat on the passenger side. Hey, hop on in. <laughs> Oh, we got an eggshell. Yeah. From what? A bird. <laughs> oh, wow. What if it's a snake? Also, is that a telephone? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone commented on the Instagram post earlier, and they were like, Arizona has 16 varieties of rattlesnakes. So, uh, we'll probably have to keep that in mind. There's like nothing in Iowa that will kill you, so we're not used to this. Besides, you know, the heat and the cold. And the mook. Whoa, Kevin! Yeah. There's an old watch right here. What? Like the old, just the watch face. Oh yeah, look at that. What about this repair seat? This is at 75,000 miles. They lubed it. And... Something starts with a D for 25 bucks. Destroyed it. Well, it looks like that's the end of the treasures. Well, we got a little extra time before the sun goes down, so... I'm gonna go through by hand and clean out what I can now, since we're already doing a trash run to some poor, unsuspecting person's dumpster. Since this engine bay is entirely poop, instead of just mostly poop, I actually put gloves and a mask on for once. I immediately got stabbed by something. Ouch! Gloves did nothing. Oh, I expected this to be like one big pile that came up. Nope. A million little pieces. There's a bit of a carburetor. Probably like socks and underwear and everything. Oh, it's just such fine stuff. My lord, look at the size of that. There's where they actually lived right there. In this hole. So, they ate a couple of our spark plug wires. Funny enough, it's not the ones covered in poop, but rather the exposed ones. Uh oh. The air cleaner is open in two spots, which means they got inside as well. All 
this mouse piss is going to do a number on the metal here. It's going to be pretty rusty once we uncover it. Because pee is acidic. That is just poop. Wow. Nothing but poop. Look at that. It's just pure shit. Insane. Oh, there's a coil. Who knew? Oh, there's a steering shaft. I'm not even getting to any like mouse nests. This is just pure seeds. They're not eating or anything. They're just here. I don't know what animal did this or why. <laughs> I can't even find the fender. solenoid. Since I've never owned one of these Broncos, I don't know where to expect to find what components. So this is like a treasure hunt. Oh, check this out. <laughs> 302 cubic inches. Cubic tons of seeds. Scooping it into a thing there. What? Yeah, a... Oh, that's an air intake. Yeah. Not that that's ever going to be usable again, <laughs> but here's my progress so far. Half a bag. <laughs> Holy cow, look at that. <laughs> Battery tray looks good, I think. It's a biohazard. Yeah, not that I can really see it. You know, maybe maybe all the poop in here has helped preserve the engine bay. It's, it's like like those petrified forests we drove through. You know, it's, it gets buried in poop and then becomes petrified metal. I feel like an archaeologist unearthing a dinosaur 302 this the small block fortosaurus from the uh from the windsor era post fuel crisis atorium this engine's been repainted blue to include the exhaust gaskets so it may have been rebuilt or at least repainted i don't know we'll see in about three days when i dig it out the one condition the owners had of us buying this is it has to be named finn after the uh, the man who owned it and loved it. This was just apparently his baby. This is his car. He loved this thing. Drove it everywhere and put a lot of time and effort into it until he lent it out to a friend and it got hit. And it got parked probably, if I had a guess, so he could start restoring it. And then I think they said he started traveling for work and it got parked, never had time. And eventually he got sick and passed away of cancer this last year. So... So yeah, we're gonna name it Finn in his honor and put it back on the road and get it restored looking nice the way he would want it to be. All right, I think that's about all I can dig out for today. I see we have a coil. We've got a distributor. We've got a reman Motorcraft two barrel. Um, alternator's present. Actually, as far as I can see, everything is here. We're just gonna need a couple uh, spark plug wires. So with that, we'll be back in the morning to vacuum this motor off, throw a battery in it, get it to crank, get spark, and then make a little noise for this episode so we're not just cleaning things all day. All right, see you then. <coughs> this is poop.
And then a bunch fell. <laughs> like the same amount. <laughs> Ben's still happy though. This is very yummy. Morning, Mook. Good morning! What you got there? I have ice cream and coffee. <laughs> <laughs> What's behind you? Turns out you can get some good off-road tires down here really cheap. We paid 200 bucks for five mounted, good to go, BFG mud trains at like half tread. So that was a total score. Those go on here and fix our mismatched size and tread problem and give us air in each tire. And that little bugger is going to give us power to use the vacuum, which is the first thing we're going to do today. So let's get to it. No. <laughs> I'm not sure if you guys can see it very well because of the sun, but there's actually an engine in here. Looks to be totally complete. Uh, we only need a couple plug wires, I'm saying. Here's a big question, though. Oh, okay, take down moves. Carburetor moves, hell yes. That's what I like to see. All right, let's get this air cleaner off so we can vacuum under it. Just the last, see how much poop is in it. I guess it just comes off, okay. Very unique air filter. Uh, was this a hood clearance thing? It had to have been a hood clearance thing. Well, air filter did a good job. Kept all the mice from getting past the air filter and into the engine. So that is good news. is mostly clean. It only took two hours. I now must go through and clean the storage unit. Get all the stuff off the ground so that we can work under it and so that we don't leave a giant pile of poop for the people. Here it is. Now remember, we really took more than this out by hand last night. Oh boy, that's heavy. Ground's clean. Engine bay's got all the loose stuff vacuumed out. We'll find some poor unsuspecting dumpster to put that in. Right, so now we can start the fun stuff. Um, we've got a lot of wiring issues to figure out, that's for sure. I have got wires all over that have been chewed up. It's not as bad as I expected, but it is going to take some time to repair all this. I guess since we don't have a key, we need to hot wire it anyway, so I can deal with this down the road. For now, let's go ahead and put a battery in it and set the hot wire in this sucker so we have ignition and crankability. All right, what's your guess, big fire or little fire? Medium. Medium fire. I'll turn the lights on. Let's see if we have any power anywhere. I doubt it. Nothing? I don't see anything. Yeah, I'm sure we're going to have to do some intense rewiring to uh, get everything working again. It's all been chewed up. Alright, well, to say the least, we've got some electrical work to do. But, we can maybe short the solenoid out pretty simply and see if she'll crank. Let me get a piece of wire. Okay. Oh, oil looks good. Like, nice and fresh good. 
I still wonder if this motor was redone before it was put away or something. Okay, so we have a wire wrapped around the S post on our solenoid. And now I'm gonna short this to the positive side here. I'm gonna see if that thing cranks. <laughs> what the hell is that? Did you hear something slap up here? What is happening? <laughs> what is that doing? I don't know why that's hopping and why it acts like there's a dead cylinder. That's really strange. Weird. Okay, so we crank. Motor sounds okay. Uh, there might be some cylinder issues on one of them. We'll get there. Could be a stuck valve. Could be just the rings are dry. Um, it'll clear up or we'll figure out what it is. Transmission's got fluid in it, so we're not going to burn that up by firing anything. Let's go ahead and sort out an ignition system and see if we can get this thing to make a little noise for this episode. So before we can actually start this, we need to make sure we have all eight spark plug wires that aren't eaten. So I'm just going to go through and replace the ones that need some help, like this guy here even. Is it on there pretty good? Yeah, probably cemented on there with poop. <laughs> Got him. How's our plugs look? Oh, they're like blue. They're being spray painted. <laughs> Half spray painted. So we know the engine wasn't rebuilt. It was just spray painted. <laughs> is this a points distributor, or is this a DuraSpark system? Because I don't see. A dirt spark box. Or is this an aftermarket distributor? It is a points distributor. Cool. We will have to sand those. I am going to go ahead and clean the points here. If you have an older vehicle with a points distributor that loses spark, this is probably something that you should look into doing. Maybe. There we go. Thank you. Ideally, we have sandpaper for this, but nothing's ideal in our lives, and we don't have any sandpaper, so emery cloth. Yay. Okay, so here's what we got. Ignition system. Here's our crank wire. Same thing as before. Just that little doodad there. This is a positive 12 volt on this side of the solenoid. We're going to take him over to the positive terminal on the coil. That should charge our coil. I'm not going to put him on until I'm ready. I'm also not going to let him hit any metal because he's positively charged all the time. This is going to be the wire I'm going to contact against the negative side. The way an ignition system works is that this coil is charged with 12 volts. It's got a positive to one side and a negative to the other. When you break that negative and open the circuit, it discharges all of its built energy right down the center core out this wire. And every time you break that negative, you get a spark from here to a ground. So that's how your sparks are created. Now, you need a time when that break happens in relation to when each cylinder is at top dead center. That's what the points that Mook was just cleaning off do. There's eight lobes on this center cam right here. And as this guy spins, he opens and closes these points, breaking that ground. So to test our coil, all we have to do is simulate those points opening and closing. Okay, we have 12 volts to the positive side of the coil. I'm going to rotate the engine to where the points are open. There we go. Or you can disconnect this negative line from the distributor points. Because if that guy's grounded all the time, this test isn't going to do anything. So you need to completely isolate this coil to test it. I'm going to find somewhere to shove this wire so that it's grounded. That should be good enough. And then I'm going to take this ground and brush it against the negative post of the coil right here. And if you look over here on the discharge lead, which I'm making sure to keep my hands nice and clear of, you'll see a spark. See it? So. That's a simple way to test the coil. Just put 12 volts to it and interrupt that negative. 
that's all it takes to make a spark out of a coil. It's a very, very simple system. So, we know our coil is good. Now what I'm going to do is, there's a couple ways to do this. Um, if your engine turns easily, like ours does for whatever reason, you can roll the motor back and forth and open and close the points and watch for a spark. And if you see it right there, so I pass that lobe, we got a nice orange spark. The other way to do it is take a screwdriver and pry those points open. You can see when I did that, I got a nice healthy spark. So our points are operational, our coil is operational. We're gonna wipe off any carbon on the top of our rotor. Make sure not to uh, bump the rotor while holding the wires that you turn the advanced mechanism and shock yourself. Um, yeah, everything works great. This is a strong spark. Clean off our cap and all of its points. These ones look brand new, so we're good to go. And then get some new spark plug wires on this sucker and see if we have spark at the end of the plugs. Which, if you don't, the only thing past that point is either the rotor, cap, or wires. That, so you, you've narrowed it down to those three items. In our case, it's going to be the wires because, you know. All right, we're back. We went to O'Reilly's. <gasps> you are so lucky I caught that. So apparently in this part of Arizona, uh, there's a lot of money and not a lot of old cars, which means when you go to O'Reilly's and you ask for a small block for a fuel pump, they go, yeah, we don't, we don't have one. The nearest one's in California. They look at you like you have three eyes. Yeah, <laughs> look at you like you got a third nipple. But you do. What? <laughs> So Mook's going to go ahead and replace all of our plug wires since we got new plug wires. Uh, and then we're going to throw a little carb cleaner down the carb and spin her over and see if she lights off and makes some noise. What do you say? I say poop. <laughs> so Mook just pulled this wire off and it looks like a totally intact, perfectly fine plug wire. But we would have had one hell of a misfire to track down because this thing is broke clean in half. So that's why we're going to go through and replace all of our plug wires. Dr. Mook. What do you hear, Dr. Mook? I hear Kevin's an idiot. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mook. What's up? You're really cute. Aww. You're stinky, too. Oh my gosh! <laughs> All right, all our wires are on, they're looking pretty. We're gonna go through and double check our firing order. This is something everyone should do when you put wires on. I don't care how good you are at it, go through and double check your firing order. It only takes a minute to make sure you haven't made any mistakes. I've screwed it up multiple times before. This is also a good time to throw some tech about the small block forge in here. These are my all time favorite engine, and for whatever reason, we don't really get to work on them much here on the channel. This might be the first revival we've ever done where I'm keeping the vehicle that has a small block Ford in it. I think the only one we've done prior to this was there was one in the junkyard with Dylan during the lightning rounds, and there was a 302 in Ike's Mustang, sorry, 289 in Ike's Mustang, which you can watch right here. There are two firing orders for a 302. If it was originally a carbureted engine made before 1984 or 1985, it likely runs the 7-8 firing order. Sorry, not likely. It definitely runs the 7-8 firing order if it has the original camshaft and nothing's been changed inside. If it is a post-85 engine and it runs a roller camshaft, it has the 4-8 firing order. Now, you're probably wondering what the hell I'm talking about. My screen's shot, but as you can see, one of these two options, engine 7-8, and the other one ends in 4-8. Now, what this is, is the standard firing order and the HO Roller 302 firing order. The HO Roller 302 firing order is actually the same as a 351 Windsor. When they went to the roller camshafts, they changed to that firing order. So if you're working on a 302 and you can't get the dang thing to fire off, make sure you have the right firing order. Because like I said, there's two. I don't know if it still happens, but back in the day when I built my first 302, if you Google 302 firing order, the first picture it gave you back then was the wrong one. It said it was right, but it was wrong. So. Pay close attention. Roller camshaft, 4.8. Normal camshaft, old carb engine, 7.8. So you're probably wondering, how do I know if I have a roller camshaft? If your intake's off, you look in the engine, it's painfully obvious. There is a spider spring holding down roller lifters. I'll put a picture of it right now. 
that is what a roller camshaft engine looks like. There's another thing I forgot to mention and you're about to see why it is important. This right here is the raised boss for the bolt of the spider spring to thread into. This is only on engines that were initially designed to accept a roller camshaft. These are known as roller engines. On the left is a pre-1985 302. Note how those two bosses are completely absent from the casting. This is important because for a number of years, Ford used their leftover flat tappet camshafts in the 5 liter truck engines. These blocks had the bosses for a spider spring but still retained a flat tappet camshaft and the old firing order. I love my Fords but honestly they're probably the worst company when it comes to engineering codes and casting codes telling you what exactly an engine is. It's pretty much hopeless. But these tricks along with what I'm about to tell you about small block Ford 302s and 351s should be a good base of information when working in the field and searching for engine cores for builds. This right here should answer all the questions in life about years and block types, forged internals in the years, and firing order. Here we go. Let's start off by debunking what the HO is. The 302 HO began in 1982 in the Mustang. This engine was simply a 302 with a 351 firing order. That's it. Different camshaft. The 8550 HO is the first roller cam block featuring taller lifter blosses. The 50HO motors had forged pistons from 85 to 92. In 92, the 50HO went to hyper eutectic pistons. Okay, there's our HO tech. Now, normal 302s. Starting in 86, all non HO 5 liter passenger cars received cast pistons and roller cams in new roller blocks. Trucks changed to the roller block in 88. They had the raised lifter bores for roller lifters, but this is the transition thing retained a flat tappet camshaft. In 92, the truck block finally received a roller cam in their pre-existing roller cam block. In 94, all five liters changed to the 50HO firing order, 351 firing order, that 48 we were talking about. The regular five liters stopped in 96 and continued on only as the GT40 motor in Explorers. The GT40 heads, best of the factory small block Ford, debuted in the 93 Cobra, and later the GT40 engine came factory in the 96 to 02 Ford Explorers. These engines switched the GT40P heads mid-97 and ran until 02. If you see three bars on the front of the head, that indicates it's a GT40. Four bars is a GT40P. The GT40P had a different spark plug angle and acquires special headers. They flow good but they're really hard to put headers in most cars. As for 351s, they went to roller camshafts in 94. That's it, those are so simple. Yeah, so there's way more information about small block forts than you guys probably ever wanted to know, but that is definitively what I have decided to be truth over the last six years of looking into them. Without further ado, let's spin this thing over with some fuel in it and see if it lights off. All right, after multiple hours of cleaning and a set of plug wires, let's see if this thing lights off. I remember we checked oil, it had it, it was good to go. I am going to make sure it's absolutely in park though. Probably a good call. Okay, we have power to the coil. Give it a little bit of brake clean. It is definitively in park, as far as I can tell. Here we go. First start, unknown amount of years. Oh yeah, it's going to be good. There's so many flat panels that it reverberates the engine vibration. It's really loud. Hell yeah, Mook. The 23 hour drive through hell was not in vain. We've got a running Bronco. Let's fill these bowls from the vent. See if it'll run any longer. Ooh. It's coming out the fuel line. Didn't see that one coming. That means it's full though. <laughs> Here we go. Come on, girl.
sat there and idled. This carb's probably good to go. Holy cow. It sounded a lot like our 79 Bronco. It has a Ford stamped muffler on it. Like this thing is so incredibly original still and still in like such great shape that I was underneath vacuuming all the poop off the ground. I looked up and it was like perfect floor pants. Perfect. And like the original Ford emblem on the muffler is incredible. Should do it again. Of course. choke off and it said no. <laughs> say this engine was just repainted not rebuilt another contributing factor to that blow by might be the rings are still stuck in the piston grooves and they haven't popped out yet we get enough heat and oil moving in this engine and those will eventually free up and it will start to run better at some point as for now we got eh, about three hours left it's time to do fuel system redo all the electrical we get the wiring harness and everything sorted out do something for a key uh, probably go through the carb, replace the accelerator pump and power valve because they're going to be shot. Then do tires and brakes and take this sucker wheeling out in the desert here in Arizona. So that's going to do it for episode one of our 73 Bronco Revival. Join us next week where we complete all those tasks that I just mentioned and get this sucker ready to go wheeling out in the Arizona desert. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel, Junkyard Digs. Subscribe to Mook's channel, Junkyard Mook. Leave a like on the video, leave a comment below. Go subscribe to all of our friends, Thunderhead289, Dylan the Cool, Classic Bustings 429, Boss Garage, Vice Grip Garage, Cars and Cameras, the whole gang. We're going to get back to work, but we'll see you next week right here on Junkyard Digs. Peace. You yeah. always forget Dr. Bob. Oh, sorry. My bad, my this bad. This poor guy.